and also please spread it. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Good afternoon everyone and thank you sincerely for assembling here at the memorial in Dover today. Here we come to remember on the eve of World Day for Migrants and Refugees 2021, all those who are on the sea at the moment, all those looking for refuge at the moment, and of course we remember all those who were looking for refuge and lost their lives on the sea. Thank you sincerely for being here today. I now invite Ben Bano from Seeking Sanctuary to speak to us. Good morning everybody and a very very warm welcome uh, to all of you who have come from London and um, a very warm welcome as well particularly to Bishop Paul to, for to making the effort to uh, come here from his busy diary. Um, we know that there are other commemorations going on and in particular the Ambassador Westminster Cathedral but we thought this was really quite a special place and a very symbolic place to be because every day now we're seeing boats arriving uh, and some people whose lives are at risk. We read about the proposals which we all find I think fairly repugnant to get people to turn back and our service today is a real mark of affirmation of the values that we really hold true to and that not only as Christians but in all faiths and of no faiths we believe in this critical time for our world and uh, for those of you who haven't seen the memorial uh, it's over here it's been here for about three years it sits alongside the, the memorial for the Chinese and who died um, quite some years ago and it's a permanent uh, remembrance of the lives the, and the family losses in, the, in our times. Thank you. Over to Arthur. Good afternoon everybody. Well, here we are again. This must be the about the fourth time I think that we've been here to commemorate those who have lost their lives at sea, trying to get to the UK, trying to find a better life and a place to call home. And things seem to have got worse, I think we'd all agree on one level. There are more wars, more persecution, more unrest, more famine, driving people to leave home and take to the roads. Well, the Western European governments, well, and some of the Eastern ones as well, are trying to batten down more and more patches, closing more and more loopholes, putting up more and more fences and walls. And to be quite honest, as this bill uh, started going through Parliament. I think it was called the Sovereign Borders Bill, then it was called something else, and now it's the Nationalities and Borders Bill. It may change yet again. I got really depressed, and I suppose I felt like giving up. And I mean, I am one of the newcomers to working with refugees. I've been doing things, whether it's in Calais or with people here campaigning or with organisations in London. I've been working with uh, refugees one way and another for the last five years, but many of you have been working for much longer and have known refugees and migrants who've been on the road for much longer. So I had the, the privilege of a few weeks, a few months I should say, um, on Iona in Scotland reflecting on all that and realised, well, it's not up to me to give up very easy for me to go off and live on an island somewhere, that would be lovely, but um, reality is that the world is still in this parlous state. Um, how do we look for hope? And I thought of three things. Um, some of those arriving over this very sea in the last few years 
have begun to settle and put down roots, and some of us will know them. Um, Caritas had a, a, a meeting the other week where we met and, and heard from some of them. Um, I got a, a, a long text from a colleague who was working in the hospital in Calais, Maria Scottsover, and he's been round visiting some, and he told us about M, I won't give the name obviously, in Manchester who's studying physics, chemistry and biology GCSE. There's one of our future scientists, medical workers. We have S, who broke his leg in Calais in a lorry accident, falling off a lorry, trying to get here and I remember that occasion because I was in the house around that time and people having to visit him and his family coming over from I think it was a, a, a Ethiopia um, now he's here he's settled he's trying to bring his wife over who's just escaped from Eritrea so somebody who's a bit further along on the journey um, and T a lovely woman well I've just seen her photo on the text um, She's now working for the NHS in Manchester. Well, how many more good news stories um, there must be of, of people that are now here and settled? So that's my first thing, hearing from the people that have made it and who are now ready to make a contribution in society here. Um, the second uh, reason for hope is there's this significant groundswell of fight back to the proposals from government. There's the RNLI who keep on going out and rescuing people despite government saying they shouldn't be doing that. Um, there have been um, people saying going out on the beaches welcoming. There are all of us in our different boroughs taking part in welcome refugee measures and Councils stepping up to the plate and saying, yes, we'll have so many families, my own. Harangay is quite a poor borough, but we're taking eight Afghan families, as well as the foster children we uh, agreed to have in the Safe Passage campaign. So lots of goodwill there. So that's another uh, tremendous sign of hope if we, if we keep looking for it and don't just read the headlines from government. And the, the third thing, of course, is our faith. And when I was thinking of giving up, um, thinking, oh, I just want a quiet life, um, I thought of all the other occasions where people of faith have simply resisted whatever the, the, the powers of darkness they saw coming at them. And we go way back to Nazi Germany and all those sorts of situations. People that have opposed to persecution in their own countries and of course the biggest sources of faith that we have are the migrants themselves who are holding on and holding on uh, and in Calais it was often uh, their, their faith gatherings that were giving them uh, hope to continue. The Eritreans were getting together um, in a place, one of the waste grounds in Calais and they kept getting moved on and they kept gathering to pray. Sometimes they would come to Maria Maria's the house to pray and so it's that faith of, of that God is there, God is just, God will not be mocked and that's what we as their companions on these journeys can hold on to and I'm sure Bishop Paul and other people doing reflections and in the prayers will say more about that but that's when I came back from Scotland thinking I've got no right to move aside other people with a lot more faith than me and a lot more resilience are going through such terrible things and still holding on to their faith. And so that's our inspiration, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. For those who don't know me, my name is Phil Curtin and uh, with Ben we're co-directors of Seeking Sanctuary which uh, arranged the erection of the second plaque here, the earlier one came from the Dover people. We start with a reading from the book of Leviticus. When a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself. For you, the foreigners in Egypt, I am the Lord your God. 
word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. God. Please uh, join in the litany, which is on the first page. O oh Lord, our hearts are heavy with the suffering of the innocent victims, who have paid the price of seeking sanctuary with their lives. The cries of the victims still haunt us. Each day live. Each day lives are risked in desperate attempts to escape death and persecution. O oh Lord, Lord, we are born in solidarity with all those who risk their lives in seeking sanctuary and oppression and danger. Teach us to extend our lives to all our selves, to meet in genuine solidarity with those who suffer our injustice. Bring us from death to life, from despair to hope. Inspire in us the will to make our world a more welcoming and pleasant place in the midst of so much violence and persecution. We, we believe, believe that suffering need not be in vain, and that the disfigurement of our world is not what God is intended. We dare to believe that God's heart is transformed and transfigure, fulfilling the promise of a new heaven, where justice and peace will rule the day. Each day, the thousands of exiles bear your cross. A thousand, thousand people flee their homes in the face of murder and genocide. Despite death, we believe in resurrection. Give us the strength each day to work to eradicate the injustices which lead to suffering and death. God, inspire us with your love. Challenge us with your truth. And empower us with your strength to live for a life in the midst of Victims die anonymously, far away from their families who cannot mourn for them. Let us be a proxy for these families, remembering each victim with the love that only a family can bring. I have of the depths, we cry to you, Lord. Hear our cry, and listen to our prayer. O Lord, forgive our life-denying pursuit of life, and teach us anew what it means to be your children. We believe in human rights, in the solidarity of all people, in the power of non-violence. We believe in God, who is love, and has given the earth to all people. We believe in human rights, in the solidarity of all people, in the power of non-violence. Do we believe in Jesus Christ? for being here today. Thank you so much to Barbara and thank you to Ben and Finn from Seeking Sanctuary who have organized an occasion for us to reflect on our common humanity. My name is Domenica and I'm the refugee officer for, for Kent for Canterbury Diocese and I also want to thank you all for an occasion of ecumenical love today. This is the second reading, Peter, verses 1-17. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, leave out your time as foreigners here in a reverent fear. And I have a poem it's been written by Ben Bano from Civil Sanctuary. A refugee. A refugee, Lord, 
into you, Anfli. A refugee, a refugee. O oh Lord, my refuge be. Bend down and hear my prayer. Come near. Save and deliver me. My rock and wall, a stronghold tall. My fortress, you will be. A refugee, a refugee. Lord, into you I flee. A refugee, a refugee. O oh Lord, my refuge be. Then stay the hand of those who plan to grasp and wreck and crush. Come rescue me, come set me free. Good to be here with you today. It is said there are about 26 million refugees in the world today. 26 million people looking for sanctuary, looking for refuge, a place to go all home. We gather here today to remember. As Pope Francis told us, that we are not thinking simply of numbers or statistics, but every refugee has a name, a face, and a story. Again and again, we hear that the reason people leave their home and seek a better life is for three reasons because of war poverty and climate change. There is a saying, don't stand and look on when your neighbor's house is on fire. If your neighbor's house was on fire, would you stand and watch? Stand and look? Would you ignore it? The refugees, and literally in some cases, their houses are on fire because of war, war being waged in their countries by weapons that were exported to their country for profit. People are on the move because of a climate change that they did not create, created by wealthy nations. The refugees born in poverty, living in poverty, excluded in poverty, and everyone has a right to a better life. Pope Francis says there are two cries. There's the cry of the poor and the cry of the earth. And the cry of the poor and the cry of the earth cannot be separated. The World Day for Migrants and Refugees is not simply another date in the calendar which we have to observe. It is a day for proclaiming that we have heard the cry of our neighbour. And the cry of our neighbour who really are our brothers and sisters, those refugees, is do not forget us. Remember us. It's a cry that says I am your brother and sister. So we come publicly to declare, yes, we know your house is on fire. You're welcome here. And it is so edifying that more and more people in this country are hearing that cry, listening to that cry, and are willing to stand up for migrants and refugees. Where there are policies that say, Let's not listen to the cry. But there are practices that say, let us silence the cry. Whenever there is rhetoric which says, don't listen to it, it's false. Then it is people like us who have to present the truth, the reality. The reality and the truth of the pain, the violence, the persecution, those who are 
leaving their homes because they cannot farm or fish any more. It is up to us to present the truth. And as I say, it is so encouraging that more and more people are opening their ears to hear that cry of our brothers and sisters. And again, Pope Francis says, we are all in the same boat. Some have fallen overboard, literally. May God give us the passion and the strength to always remember those migrants and refugees and demand that they are rescued and never put in danger. So much of our faith speaks about the dignity of a person. We also cannot forget another principle of social teaching, which is the universal destination of goods. If there are goods, then they are for everyone. We cannot deny people what is their right. And as has been said earlier, our faith is so important. Our faith motivates us. And in the message for World Day for Migrants and Refugees this year, Pope Francis speaks about how we have to replace individualism and consumerism with solidarity and fraternity. And it is we who have to take that message and put it into practice. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all you're doing in your parishes and in your communities for those migrants and refugees who are seeking a better life. Says, forget not your people, O Lord. Forget not your people, O Lord. The cries of your people, who will never know security and safety. Forget not your people, O Lord. The yearning of the children, who will never be able to fulfil their potential. Forget not your people, O Lord. The parched bellies of those who die from hunger and malnutrition. Forget not your people. Your brothers and sisters in humanity who will never know peace and stability. Forget not your people. Those who breathe their last breath as they struggle to remain afloat in the cruel waters of the ocean. Forget not your people. Those who want to praise your name, but who can't through fear of persecution. Forget not your people, O Lord. Those who speak out against injustice and intolerance. Forget not your people, O Lord. Those who linger in prisons through fighting for what is right and just. Forget not your people, O Lord those who seek to magnify and praise you in the name of justice and peace. I'd like you to do is turn and face the sea because you can hear what I say you don't need to see me and as we look out before we actually pray in blessing and seek God's blessing on the sea just let's reflect for a moment on the balances the balances between 
the, the world of the water and the world of the earth. Now the water makes the world alive. The balance is under the sea between the fish and all that's there and the feeding and the dying and the living. The balance is in our creation, the oxygen, the all the different ways of balance. And then the balances which feed human life so much there. And let's now pray. Let's pray for all those at sea today. All those who are seeking refuge. And let's pray too about the balances that we can affect. God our Father, we seek your blessing on the seas around us, especially, Lord, on the, on the portion of the sea that we are looking at now, on that space between Dover and Calais. And Lord, if there are any refugees out there now, we pray, Lord, that you'll keep them safe. And Lord, as we pray together, we pray about hearts that are open, I'm sure, Lord, we all know people who've been saved in all sorts of ways just because the right person appeared on the right day. And that happens, Lord, when the person who appears has an open heart where you can just put them in the right place. And as we think of the refugees stuck in Calais, and as we think of the people who crossed the Channel in recent weeks, we ask you, Lord, to help them to find the right people as, so that they can settle beautifully, so that perhaps even they can be saved from the sea, so that they can settle beautifully, as our friend at the start told us at the start of those three people who have found roots and are growing again. We ask you, Lord, to bless all those travelling as refugees. We also ask you, Lord, to bless all those travelling in boats, all the seamen who pass this place today and keep them safe Lord and as the sea is a source of refuge but also a source of life of teeming life we ask you Lord to bless it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen now better face the bishop while he does the blessing what? Do you want to have the hymn up before the bishop? All right. Now, if you see that it's got blessed to you, but then the next word is the hymn, Eternal Father Strong to Say. people's cry. 
all who dwell in rock and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? And of course we say today, Here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. God our Father, we thank you for bringing us here today. We thank you for opening our minds our hearts and our ears to hear the cry of your people on the sea and overseas. We pray that your spirit will continue to guide us and inspire us so that we will reach out to your brothers and sisters and speak of their cause to those with whom we associate. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.